Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us on a quick casual chat about pros and cons of completing your AA before you transfer to a university or before you're applying to a College of Veterinary Medicine. My name is Alex Avellino. I'm the Program Coordinator for Student Affairs at the College of Vet Med. And with me is Miss Amy Immler, who's representing the Department of Animal Sciences today in the College of Agricultural and Life Sciences. Hey, Amy, how you doing? Good. How are you? I'm doing well. Uh, now, Amy has advised students for years in animal sciences. I've advised students for years in vet med. And so we're coming at this from an undergraduate and a professional school's perspective. This is just our opinion, but we wanted to talk together about pros and cons so folks could listen, because it's something hard to explain, especially the high school students. Don't you think, Amy? Why is it so confusing? Well, I think that when you're a high school student, um, there's a lot of advantages to taking dual enrollment classes and, and the, you know, the ability to earn your AA degree and get your first two years done. That's a real, you know, that's a real shiny object that I think a lot of students um, value and parents and as well as their high school administration probably values. But I think that there's some challenges that a high school AA um, situation can, um, you know, create that you may not think about necessarily, so. Yeah, so let's break down a couple of the terms that we might be using. So your AA is your associate's degree. That's essentially a two-year degree that you can complete at a state or a community college. A lot of students do that while in high school, and then they could complete their bachelor's degree at a university or a state or, or a state college with two more years after that. It is less expensive historically to maybe go to a state or a community college to do that. But Amy, you know what? I did the math the other day. And I looked up a community college per credit hour, and I looked up UF's per credit hour, and the difference was like $80 a credit. So not a huge amount. What do you think? Don't you think a lot of students want to do this for a financial reason? I think that that's a driving force. Um, and, you know, I think that a lot of people don't realize how affordable Florida's, if you're an in-state student, the university system can be. Um, particularly compared to other, if they went out of state. Um, I know individuals themselves that, or I've talked with students that if they just stayed at home in state, their in-state tuition in another state would still have been comparable or more expensive than coming to Florida and paying out of state tuition, which, um, so I think that from a financial standpoint there, I think that is a driving force that a lot of students think about. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Florida, for education purposes is super affordable. Let, let's just do some quick math. So from a vet school's perspective, okay? So vet school folks is, is expensive. If you're an in-state student, you're probably coming out with 120 to $150,000 in debt. And if your end goal is vet school, if you do your AA while in high school and maybe you're saving $80 a credit, so that's $80 times 60 credits because your AA would be 60 credits, you're saving about $4,800. So you're saving maybe $5,000 that later you're gonna be spending $150,000 in debt. To me, this number isn't worth it to maybe hurt your chances when going to vet school. And by hurt my, your chances, I mean transferring from your AA to a university is a big transition. So your grades can suffer. And Amy, I want you to talk about that a little bit. It can hurt your chances because you have less opportunities at the state or the community college for extracurriculars, upper level science courses, research opportunities, on campus jobs. So, we're talking, so one big thing, hard transition. Second, you have less opportunities. Also, just the move, like making friends, leaving your family, that's a, that's a hard move for some students, and you might do better starting at a university freshman year. And then finally, the way vet school application works, you're applying, if you're traditional, your junior year of college, which means if you get those two years done in high school, you're starting as a junior at the university. So you only have one year to show what you can do at the university level. Amy, can you talk about your experience with some folks who maybe have a hard time transitioning from that AA into the university right away? Yeah, so I think that we, within our college and within our department, a significant number of students come in as as a traditional transfer student. They graduated high school, they went to a state or community college for two years and earned their AA degree there. So they're coming in around 20-ish. 
and then they finished their last two years with us. And those students, um, although that's a great way for us to still get you as a Gator, because I know get, coming in as a freshman is really hard, those students also face struggles with some of the same things that Alex just mentioned in terms of trying to get things done within a year, getting those experiences, making a transition, and also um, applying within that, essentially that first year of coming to UF, but they're 20 years old when they do that, or even a little bit older, depending upon, you know, their particular journey. So if you're coming right out of high school and you're jumping into a curriculum, and depending upon the classes that you take for your high school AA, let's just say you got Chem 1 and Chem 2 done, Bio 1, Bio 2. As an 18 year old student, you're jumping into things like Organic 1 Chemistry that our students that have been here as freshmen and have been here for three years or even those older transfer students that have some maturity on them, have some experience, um, they jump in and they struggle with it. So that transition is even harder. The other issue is that as a high school AA student, a lot of times you have already taken some of those classes that we encourage you to take to balance your schedule. So you've gotten your gen eds out of the way, right? Um, and those typically help you balance a much more rigorous science course load. Well, if you come in and you're jumping into Orgo 1, and now you don't really have a whole lot of elective space to balance out those harder classes, that makes that transition even more difficult. Um, and so we oftentimes, when we meet with high school AA students at their preview sessions, they want to, you know, they're, I think that their success in high school um, makes them overly ambitious sometimes within their first and second semesters. And they don't want to take our advice to say, you know what, I know this class isn't necessarily checking a box on your degree audit or meeting a specific requirement for your degree, but take consider lightening your load, get, you know, get acclimated, just take one, maybe two kind of harder classes and balance them with these others. And they're just on a trajectory to just rush right through. And they're like, I want to take orgo and I want to take physics and I want to take intro to animal science and nutrition because those should be easy. And they're not guys, they're not easy. Um, they're fun classes, but they are science classes. And so, you know, we try to kind of talk them off that ledge and a lot of times that conversation is hard. So I would encourage you if you do get a high school AA degree and this is the path for you, you're, you're dead set on it. When you go into it, a preview advising session, you know, really take the advice of those advisors to help you figure out what are some classes that are gonna help you balance that first or second semester and get you acclimated. Um, what are, cause sometimes those electives are gonna help you meet faculty that could be great resources for you, get you involved in some of things like research or extracurriculars and just help make you a better and more well-rounded individual, or at least also give you an outlet, right, for stress and, you know, just having a fun time in college. That's also, you know, an important thing too. There's so much to unpack here. Okay, so some, and I do want to say AP and IB courses are doing the same thing, essentially. If you're taking a bunch of AP and IB and you're coming in with a lot of credits, you'll be in the same situation where you could be jumping into classes you're not ready to jump into because in high school, you only have 35 students in the class and now you have 200. So the sequences don't make as much sense. So I'm okay with it if you want to retake some courses that you took previously. I, I think so Amy mentioned students want to get there quickly. They're like, let's go, 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 go. And that also could be a parent mindset of like, we want to get you here. For vet school, that's not ideal because we want to see you as a professional student. We want to see you as an adult. We want to see all the experiences. So rushing does not, it's almost a red flag for us, for students who are trying to get here so quickly and get everything done. We want, we want to see your development. Then when it comes to spreading out the courses within your schedule, Amy's right, like those fun courses or maybe soft science courses or gen eds, you kind of need them to help balance out the schedule. So I think there's nothing wrong for folks to get their AA while in high school or get their AA and then come to UF. If professional school is your end goal, there are other ways to do that. And I think a strong way to do that is starting at a university. And Amy mentioned, this could be a way to get you here to UF, but I don't need you to go to UF to come to vet school. 
any university in the state of Florida or outside of Florida that has a degree in biology or animal sciences is going to prepare you to come here. So if you're like, well, I can't get into UF and this is the only way I'm getting to UF for undergrad, that's okay. We'll see you when you get to vet school, but you can start at another institution. Um, Amy, with the, the number that I showed with the $4,800 that we're saving, what do you think when you know, because you helped me teach the College of Vet Med Animal Sciences prep course, $4,800 in the grand scheme of vet school debt. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I think every bit counts, right? Um, especially when you consider things like interest. But at the same time, um, I think a lot of students don't realize that. So our college, the College of Agricultural and Life Sciences, gives out hundreds of thousands of dollars to students and um, scholarships every year. Some of that is never given out because they don't have enough applicants. Um, and so those can be $500 to $1,000 or more uh, per semester or per year, depending upon the application. Within our department, we give out roughly $40,000 worth of scholarships. And again, that's per semester or per year that ends up being you get a $500 or $1,000 check. So if you're doing the right things, if you're academically sound, if you're getting involved, and doing the things you need to be doing to be a competitive professional school applicant, getting to know your faculty, getting involved in research, um, getting involved in your department, getting involved in your campus and college, there are going to be opportunities for you to um, earn scholarships that I think could easily cover $5,000 over the course yeah. of four years. It's particularly, yeah. even if you get a high school AA, and I'm sure we'll talk about this later, um, I don't recommend getting in and getting out and being done in two years. I say, if you're gonna do it, do it for the reason that you get to be here and you get to pick up a minor and you get to do some things like study abroad. You kind of, you expand that that time and you're here maybe three years if you wanna do it early, but I know some students that they get here, they love it and they wanna do it for four years and they earn scholarships throughout the entire way because they're working in those experiences that make them competitive for those applications and really help with that. Oh, absolutely. I think that I, first of all, I love all this talk about scholarships. That's true. Like the money that you might have saved by getting your AA can be found elsewhere, either through scholarships or maybe working while you're in school. There's other ways to make that money. Amy's right. Every little bit does count. I think it's wise to be realistic that $4,800 versus $150,000 in debt, you know, we can, we can find that money elsewhere. And I, I think sometimes students don't know that vet school, you pay for that with loans. Unless you have family help and you happen to have $150,000 laying around, you're taking out federal loans to pay for this. So I think students in high school are like, oh, I'm going to save as much money now to help me pay for vet school. Professional school is so expensive that you really do need government help to do this. So money, we can find the money, but we can't fix grades and experiences and rushing things. Um, all right, and then we're talking about spending time longer at UF. I agree with a minor. I, you could double major. You could be doing internships some semester. So there are ways to, you know, you could get your AA, but then still stay at UF and really have a robust, rich experience here. So there's lots of ways to do this. This can be new, confusing information for middle school, high school, even college students. Can be confusing for parents. There's certain ways that folks have said to do things, but then professional school does things differently. So what I would like folks to take away from this conversation, I understand why you would want to do AP, IB, or dual enrollment. It helps your way to GPA to get into a good university or college. It sounds like a good idea to get some of those gen eds out of the way to move forward to your dream career. And it could save some money and keep the student at home and getting to commute between home and college. For professional school, we are looking for adult, professional, mature students who can show us years of experience working with veterinarians, doing research, having outside employment, having a life with extracurricular activities and leadership. So to rush to get here is a little counterproductive. I encourage students to consider starting as a freshman at a university, if you have the grades and the money, and remember, you're going to be spending a lot of money, you're going to be using federal loans to get here later. So 
you kind of have to like rework that construct. Amy, what do you want folks to take away from talking about AA's dual enrollment, APIB from an undergraduate perspective? So I think, I think the one thing to keep in mind is everybody's journey is different and everybody's reason for doing a high school AA or just working on a few dual enrollment or APIB credits and then coming in later, whether that's as a freshman or a transfer is that um, all sorts of journeys take you to vet school as long as you're doing the right steps along the way. So make sure that you give yourself time to build in those experiences because vet schools, when you talk to admission um, panelists or you know people in your position, vet schools are moving towards a more holistic approach each and every year that I've been advising students and working with students. Obviously grades are still gonna be important. So you wanna set yourself up for success. And so making sure that if you do those classes early, like chemistry or biology, particularly the chemistry, since you have more sequences to go once you get here, that, um, you know, there's also the opportunity to wait on some of those. And maybe you get your AA, but you come in and you start taking chem at the ground level. Um, or, you know, thinking about maybe not jumping into them in that first semester, giving yourself some time to adjust, take advice from your advisor, um, but then also maybe not waiting two years between chemistry one and two and your orgo sequence. So I think the key to remember is everybody's journey is different and you need to meet with people like an academic advisor and somebody like Alex to, you know, kind of help flesh that out for what's right for you. And then, you know, a lot of our advisors within the College of Agriculture and Life Sciences, not just within our department, they meet not only with current students, but also prospective students. So reach out to them, make appointments with them, sit down and get their take on what's going on and, and really think about, you know, as you're, if you are going to take those classes ahead of time, you know, which ones are the best fit for you and for the program that you think you might actually pursue as an undergrad or even um, within a professional setting. 100% agree. So many ways to get here. Everyone's journey is different. Strategize with what works best for you while collecting as much information and facts and advice that you can. And then we will see everybody here, however they get here. Looking forward to it. Amy, thanks so much for chatting with me. We hope this was helpful. We know it can be quite confusing, especially if you're not in this advisor academic space. So take in what we said, do some Googling, do some research. And then we will see you all here at hopefully the University of Florida. Have a great day.